right, guys. Day four, part one. We made it. We still have the rest of the day, but we made it. You sound a little rough, dog. <laughs> Sacrificing our body for you, America. That's right. All of y'all, all of our viewers, like I said, we still have part two to get through today. So you still have a little bit of time to comment down below to get your last minute little request who you want to see us visit, things like that. We had our Freedom Fest party last night. It was a blast. Yeah, yeah, you probably can't tell. <clears throat> So I don't know what these guys are complaining about. I'm older than all of you, and I'm bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I'm so glad you can brag about that. Awesome. First, first of all, y'all left me and Kaya. Yeah. Y'all left us. Yeah. Okay. And you didn't tell us. There's group text for a reason. And the group text said nothing about anybody going. You might want to check that out twice. <laughs> yeah, I call, I call BS. But anyway, guys, we're excited to kick off day four, part one. Like I said, stay tuned later this afternoon for part two. And Bagara's right here, so I'm going to go talk to them and see if maybe I can actually shoot one of their guns better than what I did in the bulk gun series. I don't know. Kai liked the Azrael quite a bit, and that worked out for him, right? That was pretty good, but they're not here right now, so... So, I mean, you couldn't have done much worse. So. That is definitely true. So I feel, like, like, I feel like we both need a me. redemption, so stay tuned for that. We are now over here with Colin with Bagara. It's always good to see you, yeah, man. Great to see you again, man. Absolutely, dude. And I got to tell you, man, we got some new rifles that look pretty freaking sweet, especially that top one. So let's just roll right into it. What we got new for 2024? Yeah, so this year what we went for, we went for lightweight and versatile. Yeah. So different offerings for different different feature sets. This first one here, this is the Micro Light, the MG Micro Light. Yeah, it looks nice. 5.8 pounds, short action cartridges yeah. to start with. Basically, the, the MG Light came out last year. Yeah. And folks wanted it in a shorter package. So we got this in 308, 65 Creed, and 65 PRC. Awesome. Um, absolute awesome, awesome yeah. backpack gun. Yeah. Just tiny. So and, and super light, like you said. Very I, light. I didn't even realize the stock was side folding until I hit the button there. And I was like, oh my god, yeah. I thought I broke it. No, yeah. that's a side folding. That's freaking nope. cool. So this one, this one we're really excited about. Uh, then moving down into these other ones that we have, we have the Crest Carbon. Uh, this also has our Cure Carbon barrel on it, which is the same as the, the MG Micro Light. Yeah. Um, we have a complete stock that we manufactured ourselves with this one, full monocoque construction with foam core and a carbon uh, spine down the center for rigidity. Yeah. Um, I think you shot this this stock on the steel barrel version last year at range day when you guys came yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so fantastic. That's that B14 squared like crest that. carbon. And then for smaller frame shooters, this is going to be one we're actually super excited about as well. Yeah. Uh, this is the Stoke. It's got a 12 and a quarter inch length of pull. So any small frame shooter that you have. Um, this is going to be a fantastic rifle for those folks. It's kind of a niche in the market that's uh, that's really not not taken care of right now. Right. So got that one coming out. It's about six pounds. Um, MSRP at eight ninety nine on that one. Um, and then the Sierra. This is kind of a good hybrid in our wilderness series that we're very excited about. Fluted barrel, omnidirectional muzzle brake, uh, fluted bolt, and then an adjustable cheek piece on this in like that sporter style stock. Right. So real good versatile lightweight hunting rifle yeah. at a really good good price point right about 1099 msrp that's awesome man so, so i mean so you guys are definitely looking at yeah i, I like how you guys kind of like all right cool we're gonna put out this really cool expensive thing yeah. super lightweight and then you made some rifles too that are gonna be a little bit more budget friendly for those that are looking for a specific uh niche type Absolutely. of a thing yeah or also just like i mean that that last one for that price point that style that look and everything else i that one's exciting absolutely for sure. yeah i think that's going to be one of our one of our best sellers this year yeah i think i think i agree with that now remember guys i ran the Bagara. Uh, B14, I think it was the HMR B14 Wilderness Carbon. Correct. Yeah, yep. long name. Yep. And uh, remember, I didn't do that gun justice, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think I zeroed it correctly from the start. I don't think I torqued down the freaking scope rings because I noticed that there was some scope sliding happening. I was oh, like, oh okay, my yep, God, yep. dude. I was like, who installed this for me? Because yeah, it wasn't me. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, all right, you know what? So I feel like I need to give Vergara and me a redemption. But I, I think I might choose a different rifle just to just just for fun. Let's do you know it. What I mean? We make it happen. All right, yeah. man. Well, Colin, it's always good to see you. Thank awesome. you so much, yep. man. Thank you, man. Guys, check out Bergara. And here we are, guys, continuing our shot show coverage here at the Leopold booth. I'm sitting here with Sean. Thank you, man, for having us. Absolutely good to see you. Absolutely, we finally got in here. So you guys have been <laughs> packed all week. So yeah, man, I have my eyes on this Mark IV HD, and, and of course, other folks want to want to know about. So please take it away. So yeah, the uh, the Mark IV HD is a new family of rifle scopes we launched earlier this month. Okay. When people hear Leupold in Mark IV, they think of that legendary scope that kind of launched in the late 80s, early 90s, mm -hmm. served honorably all over the world, you know, and it's been in before we discontinued it in 2018. The Mark IV HD is a spiritual successor. We took everything we learned in those 30, 40 years and applied it to the new Mark IV HD line. And like I said, it's a whole family of scopes. So you start with the one to four and a half here, then we've got a two and a half to 10, 
a four and a half to 18, a six to 24, and an eight to 32. Mm. They have a lot of shared features here. Uh, you have fast focus eyepiece, removable throw lever, locking elevation dial. Some of them have capped wind inch dial, some will have a zero locking wind inch dial. Okay. Depending on the model, we're offering both just based on what people prefer to shoot, what they like. The one to four and a half and the two and a half to 10 are 30 millimeter rain tubes, so more in that LPVO space. Okay. The four and a half and 18 and up, they're 34 millimeter rain tubes, like right. the classic Mark IV. Right. So, you know, what you're looking at here is, is a scope that's got a ton of versatility and a ton of value. Yeah. You've got a professional grade optical system. You have, you've got illuminated options if you want it. You've got MOA or mill options. You've got something for everybody, right? Whether it's going on your AR or it's going on your long range precision rifle, rifle we've got to take care of. Wow. So, question for you. Can you customize your reticles with these if I order it or? So, the custom shop is still closed. Okay. So, we're not going to offer anything customization wise, but okay. there are 25, 30 different configurations between illumination, not illuminated, based on what you're looking for. Okay. Like I said, we can do mill or MOA. Uh, you know, I know the original Mark IV once upon a time was a mill MOA scope. Not the case anymore. These are mill or MOA. Got you. But you guys still have enough flavors in the box to supply everybody with what something close to comfortable or what they need. So that that still is awesome. Absolutely. So. And you know, it's backed by our loophole loophole's legendary full lifetime guarantee. Absolutely. And, you know, and we are proud to still design machine and assemble everything that goes in a gun in our Beaver Tutorial Factory where I work with seven hundred and fifty other hardware Americans. Wow, that's awesome. Last thing I want to cover though is price, right? Okay, yeah. So okay. like I said, it's an incredible value. One thousand dollars to get into the one to four and a half only goes up to 1600 for the full 8 to 32 here. Wow. And everything else falls somewhere in between. So you're looking at a, just an absolutely amazing amount of scope for that price. Absolutely. American made, solid glass. You can't get any better than that, guys. Wow. Sean, thank you so much for having us at, our, at your booth, man. Thank you appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, guys. So I'm here at Faro Concepts with Jim. And, man, it's great to see you. Oh, good to see you. Absolutely, man. I hope you're having a great show. And we've got our uh, unnamed assistant over here who's going to be modeling for us. Uh, you know, he might give us a spin in a minute. But uh, we were going over some, some rigs, right? That's right. Um, I just want to go over our Rhodesian, which is called the Chesty Wide V2. Correct. And uh, the reason why it's a V2 is because you can see our base model is right here. We had some uh, real estate on the side and it wasn't wide enough, so we widened it out to fit our GP pouches on the side. So this one's already set up. Um, so the Chesty Wide V2 uh, is pretty slick. It's got some cool things, little things about it. Uh, that I'm going to talk about. One of them is you could replace your front flap with a modularity of a different types of uh, uh, pouches up front. And one of them is this one right here. So you could actually, for us, you could have this set up for 9mm, 5.56, uh, 308. And basically, you got the Velcro and you got G hooks. You just hook it into the G hooks and then you got your setup right here. Um, other models we have. Uh, this one is also our fully loaded Chesty uh, V2, and you can see that it's loaded out for bear. So you could go from super slick or uh, keep it to uh, minimalist. Couple, yep, I want to show him the, the back side of the harness. So usually, uh, Rhodesians have a sewn in part, and then on the front, you could do the adjustment. On ours, you could adjust the front and the back so you could get this piece exactly where you need it, and it's for comfort. Um, the other thing is, I'll turn you around. You, a lot of times for uh, all chest rigs, that this extra flap, we roll it up, we tape it, we cut it, but then if you cut it, you're stuck if you need it to get bigger because you're doing cold weather, now you ran out of stuff. So what we have is this unique little pocket. We take the excess, we push it through, pull it up, put it back through again, and then you're clean. So we got that here, here, and the, the tops. All right, so yeah, I think it's fantastic, you know, uh, kind of the the decision of what kind of uh, personal protection that people go for, whether, you know, it be something more minimalist, like a chest rig, or, you know, like full plate carry. And it's really cool that you have the adaptation to be able to say, okay, from day to day, or what, depending on what I'm doing, I can go for something just kind of a little bit load carrying, super minimalist, lightweight, lower profile, versus, you know, adding all those accessories for maybe a longer mission, or because you want additional uh, protection or options or anything. 
So yeah, I mean, I think uh, the modularity makes it a fantastic kind of value for the customer. They can configure it exactly the way they want to. So Jim, I really appreciate the time, man. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your show, Mr. Uh, Mr. Model over here. And uh, again, thanks for giving us the time here at Ferro Concepts. Yep, thank you. All right, here we are at Silencer Co. We got Craig over here. Craig, thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thanks uh, for thanks for coming by. Absolutely. So you've got some new products for Shot Show 2024. You want to talk about them? I know you were talking about Spectre 9 right here. Yeah. So we're excited to unveil the Spectre 9. So this is a you know new baffle stack. It's actually you know quieter than the Omega 9K if you're familiar with that product. Uh, it's got the same back end, so all the same pistons, direct threads, three lugs are all going to work with this can. Okay. And um, um, it's uh, about half the weight of the older products. What's so the metallurgy? The four, four ounce can. It's uh, titanium. Titanium. Yeah, so full okay. titanium. Can you grab them real quick? Oh yeah. wow, this thing weighs. Yeah, and if you nothing do the do the Pepsi challenge with the old product, which is not heavy, but you know when you when you feel this one, it's like oh wow. Yeah, there is yeah. a significant. It's a, it's a big difference. Significant difference. Wow, it's yeah. really good, and it's titanium, so you're not gonna have any durability issues. Well. So with that being said, do you want, uh, how do I say this, durability wise, mm -hmm. what's the difference? I mean, obviously titanium is going to be stronger. So ti it, yeah, titanium is a durable enough material, especially for a nine millimeter can, but that also gives that can a rating for uh, 300 blackout, subsonic and supersonic, which is pretty oh, cool. Okay. You don't see that a lot with pistol cans. That is, that so is true. It's a tough little can. And of course, you know, with all of our stuff, we have a, lifetime warranty so if you do run into issues it's important to have a suppressor company that stands behind their products which silencer co will be here for you absolutely and that that is fantastic so this can is this available right now for consumers it should be available next month next and month, okay. 879 msrp 879 not bad. Okay, that is fantastic. Any of those guys uh, shoot MP5s and some other 9mm? I mean, shoot 9mm yeah. express. Pistol it's caliber carbines, pistols. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. It, it is, it is fun ticket. to shoot 9mm uh, subsonic rounds. It's like 300 blackout. It is just, they're yeah. like the movies, right? Yeah, exactly. So, you've got something else. I know you talked about that. You, got, you said you have a couple more products. Yeah, so we have a low back pressure can. So this okay. is the Velo series. We've had this available in a full size 5.56 can. And we just kind of added to the lineup with a, a short version, a K version. Okay. And then also a 30 caliber version. So these are uh, 3D printed in Canel Core. It's got the, um, you know, the vents to reduce the back pressure, runs a little better on semi-autos. These are some of the toughest cans we've built too. We've been burning these down on some belt feds and they really hold up. Oh, they are, so they're, uh, they're good for full auto rate yep. too. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, and you said these are low back pre pressure. So there's a, is it patented design I'm assuming? Yep. Obviously. Well, what's the technology behind it? So uh, it's, you know, it's similar to some of the other offerings on the market where you're just, you know, you've got different pathways that you can create with uh, additive manufacturing that you can't do with conventional machining. And that lets you vent gas in, you know, new and exciting ways. So yeah, that's yeah. kind of what, what, what they're doing. Absolutely. And uh, these are available for consumers now, and what's the MSRP? Yeah, so this this one's been out um, for a while, so it should be available, the full-size 5.56, five, right. and then I would say in the next month or two, we'll have these other variants out, and um, I can't remember all the prices off the top yeah. of my head, but they're, um, you know, on our website or in our catalog, so yeah. silencerco.com. Yeah, I don't blame you. You've got a lot of products. Remembering yeah. MSRP on every single one of them yeah, could be challenging. That is fantastic. Well, Craig, thanks a lot for your time. Really appreciate you. No problem. Yeah, thanks guys, for coming by, guys. Absolutely. Guys, check out Silencer Co. They, as Craig said, they make one of the toughest suppressors out there. Definitely check them out. Now we're over here with Body Armor Vent. This is some pretty exciting technology because if you run a plate carrier, you run Body Armor, you might find out really quick that that stuff gets hot especially if you're running around all day on a hot day, oh, yeah. and now you just got material on material stacked on top of material that's gonna be, well, causing a lot of irritation and sweat and things like that. Well, what Eric, the Eric's here, but what Eric's body armor vent has done is ultimately designed something to help kind of get that air passing through and offer a little bit of relief, is that right? Yeah, basically our, uh, our venting system offers a circumvental airflow. So, air is, so cool air is coming in through the bottom as hot air is rising out through the top your actual breathing helps facilitate that to happen. So it's kind of, I kind of say it's like a tactical bellows right. that happens. Um, and then because of the whole system and the way that it is 
channeled, air's always flowing. It never stops. Even if it's coming up and it runs into a wrinkle of your undershirt, it's going to kick in through a hole, come through the back, come back out. So it's moving all the way around, always moving through. We're not here to make you stop sweating. Yeah. We're here to keep fresh sweat from going yeah, okay. and keep you fresh and nice. Right. And like you said, it gets rid of the rashes, the boils, the comfort, um, in the right situations. Yeah. I mean, I've actually like had gone from a sweaty shirt and put on a kit right. and actually started getting goosebumps and chills because the evaporation is just happening so fast. That's cool. That's, yeah. that's really cool. And I can see how in a law enforcement application, you know, something like one of the, uh, you know, more of the hidden vests, how that could definitely help. But also I'm thinking, you know, I'm in, I'm in the Marines. I'm out at 29 Palms on occasion where it's 120 freaking degrees and I'm, and I'm in full kit for six, seven hours. Yeah. Yeah, having having some airflow sounds like it'd be a pretty good time. Oh, definitely, right. you know. And then we actually came out uh, back in 2022. We came out with our B24, yeah. which is basically our custom cut panel. Yeah. So you know, if you're running a plate carrier, this is awesome. It's shaped like the plates. It's shaped like the carrier, but it also gives you the option to basically custom cut whatever shape you want. Chest rigs, yeah. thigh rigs. I mean, it will go on anything. Yeah. That's, that's super cool. Now, with Eric to my right, Alpha Mega Kydex, it's always good seeing you, bro. It's great seeing you. Yeah, man. And you've taken now that same technology and pretty much thrown that on some of the best holsters in the world, I think, because I run the crap out of them. And I haven't broken one yet, which is crazy because if you guys see my videos, my Safari Land uh, rig with my Alpha Mega Kydex external holster, it's... Dude, I'm on the ground. I'm, I'm doing rolls, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, you're constantly like rolling around, doing yeah. what you got to do. Right. You know, we we love the durability of our holsters. Right. They work. They do the job. Yeah. Last year, this was literally a conversation that said, "We know how good body armor vent is. Right. Why can't we do this and and factor into an everyday carry holster?" Yeah. And that's where that the Alpha Wedge was born, and that was it. All started with this one which is a six inch panel. And we were looking at it like typical foam wedge. Yeah. The foam wedges out there on the market now are just solid, no breathability whatsoever. You can't get any adjustment out of them. And it, you know, you, it is what it is. If it doesn't work, you gotta go buy another one that's a little thinner or go cut your flip flop up and put it in your, you know, on the back of your holster. Right. So we started out with the alpha wedge and then we moved into the, the fin wedge, which is a four and a half inch and a six inch. Yeah. So that's the four and a half inch there. And that's the six inch, which these are dedicated for your light bearing type holsters. If you want it like more compact or subcompact type on your holster, or you can go with your full size setups. Um, that carried on into now the custom that literally popped right before SHOT Show. Yeah. It was kind of a little un unexpected, but it came out. And this is a custom panel that you can actually cut to however you really see fit. If yeah. you want some kind of weird S on your holster, you can do it. Right. But we, like I said, we. We looked at it, we developed it, and it was one of those things that Eric and I literally sat here and said, if it works on your body, why can't it work on your holster and keep you cool here as right. well? Right, and it, and I see this being super practical, uh, quite frankly, because if you're like me, you you stay strapped, right? You carry all the time. Yeah, carry it pretty much all the time. You get clapped. Yeah, oh, yeah exactly, right? <laughs> and it is nice to have a little bit of comfort there because how many times, I mean, dude, with underwear on everything else even still you go to pull out your your holster and you're like oh god you know what i mean yeah. and you're like okay no let's make sure nothing's stuck right well exactly it would, be nice get, it would be nice to get a little bit of airflow through there you oh, know what yeah, I mean? yeah definitely. Yeah. exactly yeah it's yeah just, it is it's fractured you know? plastic against the body well, right. see and the other thing that's nice about this like i said you get the adjustability mm -hmm. you've got five different ways of air to be able to travel through this left yeah. right up down and straight down the middle with all the holes in the pounder but on top of that you can actually take the panels apart because it's three tiers. Yeah. You can remove the middle one if you don't want that much pressure on your pelvic girdle yeah. for that concealment, and you can make it smaller. That's cool. So you can take it to the max setting or you can take it down one to get a medium setting, and then you can even remove the last panel and get just a panel itself, yep. which minimal push, but still allowing airflow flow and that cooling technology there. Right. So, I mean, we, we, we sat for probably about eight months yeah. working on this thing. Prototype after prototype after prototype. I'm running two of the last prototypes before we started going into production with it yep. on my staccato holsters myself right. on my EDCs, yeah. and that's that was how we tested it. I I wore it 
and then I had a couple go out to people that I knew and I was like okay I didn't even tell you or anybody else yeah, about right. it I was really secret about it I had a couple people try it out and they all came back with some really good positive feedback right and man, I'm, I'm excited to try it out and run it because again, just getting that extra airflow because like I said, carrying all the time, this is going to be a nice thing to have where it's a little bit more comfort for you and your everyday carry. And and assuming too, this goes, this can go with the uh, the sidecar too with the extra mag caddy. Absolutely. So absolutely. you can, so you throw that on the mag caddy part. So, because if you're like me, you've got your pistol and a spare mag all right here. And it's kind of a lot all up front, but you know, with clothing and everything else, it is comfortable, but this is gonna take it that one step further and make it breathing much more comfortable for long extended day periods of wearing. And I think is a awesome job, honestly, and a great Thank idea. You. Yeah. Thank you. It's uh, like I said, Labor of Love, we've been working on it. Right now, they're actually available for pre-order on Body Armor Events website. Okay, great. And they'll be shipping in spring. Yeah. And then I'm gonna get my website updated because yeah. I'm a little behind on it. Yeah. So it'll be an added option. Once you order your holster, you can. we're gonna have a box on the website. Do you wanna add a fin wedge or the alpha wedge? Right where I, I'll toss it in the package, you go ahead and stick it on yourself. There's already an instructional video on install on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, which is very, very small because I just got it going. Yeah. But uh, I'll have it on the website. And then if you already have a holster, there'll be an option to be able to buy it direct as well on my, my website once they drop. So if you want to add it, and you can take it and you can add it to anybody, anybody else's holster out there. Yeah. I would prefer if it was mine, but you know, it's. I would actually love other holster companies to actually pick this technology up and say, "Hey, this is a good idea." The the feedback has been insane. There's a, we'll say, a NATO friendly country that has reached out already and okay. met with us. They're wanting to try some out nice. for their entire reserve uh, group. Okay. Um, BattleBox has shown a lot of interest in the customizable uh, oh, yeah, setup. Oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah, and so and several influencers out there have been looking at it. They they kind of peeked at it. Yeah. You're going to be getting one, so we'll be Sweet. hearing from you on what you think. Yeah. So, yeah, so a lot of interest has been shown. It's actually a lot more than we actually thought it was going to be. Right. It kind of made us, like, rethink manufacturing. Like, okay, wait, this is getting a little bit bigger. Right. And we're happy about it. We love it. But yeah, so it's it's great. I really love to be able to do. I, I'm happy we did the launch here. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Well, I'm excited for both of you guys. Obviously, this is something I need to be trying out uh, uh, sooner. Than this. I wish I wish I knew a little bit more. I wish I knew about it sooner than now. Is what I'm saying. And I'm really excited to run, of course, the EDC and my holster setup, of course, uh, with it. So, guys, again, Alpha Mega Kydex holsters. Eric, it's always good seeing you. Always great seeing you, Clint. Eric, hey. it's always good seeing good you. Good Body Armor event. Thank you guys so much, and we'll move on, on to the next one. And here we are over here at the Genesis booth. First of all, Cody, thank you for having us. Thank you. Absolutely, brother. And I see you got that wonderful thing that we shot at Industry Day, and I'm so, I want, we need to know more about it, for yes, sure. Absolutely. So, uh, for starters, a little bit of origin story on the system. Okay. Um, the, the shotgun is a five inch barrel, the PDW stock. This is our design. Mm -hmm. This was out of the, uh, designed for a breaching shotgun to be suppressed, but okay. also if you were to unsuppress it to just be extremely compact. So without the suppressor, you're looking at about 21 and a half inches in overall length. That's super small. Super. Uh, but five inch barrel has its limitations, obviously when you transfer to buckshot or slugs. As a breacher, it's also pretty concussive on the door, right. just because you're so close to the, uh, the muzzle there. But adding the suppressor, it just greatly reduces those pressures. And then obviously, sound and we got some added benefits when we went to buckshot we got tighter patterns accuracy was improved 100%. a little bit more uh, feet per second so the overall system totally surprised us so it's like we had the ultimate shotgun you know obviously the john wick featured uh shotgun which you know we were nominated as the most innovative product for the year was right. the terran tactical right. and then we got that award which was really awesome and a big honor mm -hmm. uh, but this was just to seal that completely who else built a five inch barrel suppressed shotgun that measures 25 inches muzzle the butt on this thing and then we're like well how do you make it just a little bit more well maybe you go out and you finally release the 15 bag. round drum wow so this year we'll have our 15 round drum it's going to be in the market probably by may june okay. um so yeah now the shotgun can have 15 rounds of awesomeness and you'll have the most compact shotgun that's ever been made wow Wow, now I can't have the one with the giggle switch because that would make me go absolutely nuts, but that is something special. Bro. Well, since you brought it up, you're right. Uh, we do all of our testing in-house okay. with fully automatics. Generally, when we go to demos, we also bring those out for the demos because for us, it's about a shooting experience. Right. 
you know, uh, you can shoot pistols, you can shoot rifles, everybody gets to shoot those things themselves, semi-auto. And it's not very often you get to go to a range and shoot a fully automatic shotgun. And it's just one, the only shotgun that's actually controllable doing it as well. 100% uh, confirmed. Yeah, <laughs> so that's what we do. Um, we think we built the best shotgun in the world. We just want everybody to have it. This is an awesome product, guys. And if I could stress this even more enough, so controllable. The recoil impulse is straight back, so light, it's soft, especially with the suppressor attached. It's bar none, man. Absolutely. Cody, yep. Cody we appreciate you, brother. I thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us. All right, guys, so you know I had to hit up the Arsenal booth because I'm a huge AK fan, and if there's the one brand that is like the highest value of production non-custom AKs, it is definitely Arsenal. Not that they don't do custom work. We'll get to that later. But this is Savag, the marketing director. Yeah, How's it going, sir? Awesome. And, thank uh, you. Well, thank you for your kind words. Oh, thank you yeah. so much. This is what I was talking about, these beautiful cases. And why don't we talk about uh, the future of these cases? Well, I mean, the introductory, this is the first year that we've had this. To us, we care about how the depiction, how is our brand depicted? How is our consumer really, you know, it, it, for us, it's about branding. Perception right? becomes Perception reality. Be it really does, but at the same time, you don't want to receive one of these things in like a pizza delivery box, right? right? You're paying good money for it, and we pride ourselves on quality. Well, we should put out quality. So right? that has always been kind of one of those things about our products is that you have such a fantastic product Thank you. in such a lackluster packaging. And yeah. being that I, I have a position in our warehouse, in our actual operations, right. uh, that's always been one of those things. Like we have to take care that those boxes don't get damaged. Uh, but this looks like uh, it's gonna be a great. Whatever you need to go to range with, for traveling, it makes it easier, right? So we're trying to accommodate you as best as we can, right? I mean, it's not a Pelican case, but that we try to give value and affordability at the same time. This isn't just right. cut down one way and flat on the top. This truly centers the oh, firearm in the middle of Ma the case. Matthew, you nailed it. Like you hit the nail right ahead. It's a snug, you hear the air going out of it, mm -hmm. right? These are laser cut to that firearm. And then the uh, the locks, these are TSA rated? So they are, they are TSA, they're not approved, but they're compliant, okay. right? So, I mean, they work, you set your own lock, so you're good to go. This is the holy grail this of what we have. Is this gorgeous. is gorgeous. I mean, history. look at this. I personally have the silver myself. There was only 600 of these ever made. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side, there's the gold, I guess, version of that, mm -hmm. where there was only 100 made. Now, Kalishnikov himself came in. We invited him. He spent his 90th birthday with us. He's very close friends with our CEO here at Arsenal Inc. He handheld signed these things. It's literally like a dream gun, right? I mean, like, come on. Like, think about it. If you if you're gonna have like one trophy gun in your collection, like this would be a great example of that it would one. Be nice to have both. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So as as great as a production arsenal rifle is, you do guys also do custom work. We certainly do. Yeah. And and it's it's growing. And again, it's a it's a process. We actually have you know we do the manufacturing in house. We hire artists to do this. It's an art form to do a Serco. So we literally spent and invested money and time into creating a video to show our customer the journey, the 12 step process that goes into uh, Cerakoting one of these things. Great, and so you have a variety of custom finishes and I mean, customers can kind of create custom projects that you uh, will- Yeah, we're working on a landing page where you can actually go in there and see the before afters and, and actually select what you want to do or maybe even submit something that you'd like done. So so right now we're even offering free engravings on your Picatinny rail. You know, you get a, uh, an SM13 from us. You can, some people want to put the serial number and match it, you know, the match, matching set. We are trying to build as much of a custom shop so that you can customize your AK to your liking. I absolutely appreciate the time. I well, hope you all have you. a great thank rest of your show, sir. Bye. Always great seeing you, Matt. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys, we're here at a very, uh, uh, you know, well-known booth here, Desert Tech. We've had several of your products featured on the uh, channel before. Uh, I think we've uh, done some things with CF contests with products that y'all have had before. Um, but this is Nick. Hi, Nick. How's the show going, man? Doing, doing great. The show's been awesome. Awesome. And this is a brand new offering for the show? Yes, this is a brand new rifle. It yeah, looks can be a little deceiving. It looks a lot like the MDRX, uh, but it is not. It can be further, further, further from the truth. So, a okay. uh, brand new rifle. Appearances can be deceiving, that's yes. true. So, uh, what are uh, some of the features of, of this new rifle? Yeah, so this is the, the Desert Tech Wolverine. Uh, so, the Wolverine, some of the differences compared to the MDRX, 
uh, we have 49 fewer parts in this rifle compared to the MDRX. So um, what that did is it allowed us to actually integrate a lot of those parts that were, I guess, bolt-on, for lack of a better term, uh, for the MDR, reduce tolerance stacking, reduce weight, increase reliability, because you have a lot of less moving parts um, for the rifle. So overall, just a, a more well-built system and just, just KISS, right? Keep it simple. The less parts, the simpler it is, right? Exactly, exactly. One of the other um, big changes that we have on the Wolverine platform is that it is going to be side eject only. Okay. So uh, the MDRX, the forward eject system that uh, we, we all love, um, it's it's going away. And really the reasoning behind that is, is two things. Again, it helps us reduce some of the parts. It keeps it simple, like you said. Uh, it did reduce the weight. But from a, a military law enforcement adoption perspective, some of the biggest objections that we had was you know you can't chamber check it's dip more difficult to clear a malfunction um, and so this just simplifies everything and uh, because of that we're actually able to reduce the amount of gas needed to cycle the firearm uh, and that reduces recoil and improves the accuracy of the firearm as well. So I actually thought that was one of the really cool things when you looked at the operation of that forward ejection and kind of how it had like a, a scissor lift mechanism inside of it. Yeah. It also lets you pretty quickly swap it over from left side to right side ejection. Does this also swap? It does swap. It is a little bit more involved than the Ford eject system because you do have to manipulate the bolt as well, but it's still pretty simple, right? You just take this cover off and the one on the other side, you swap them, open the, the bolt, pull it out, turn it 180 degrees, and you can eject out of the other side. Uh, yeah, so that still sounds pretty uh, pretty easy for the user. Maybe not like uh, directly in the field at the range kind of thing, but certainly shouldn't be too hard for uh, uh, people. Uh, Go ahead, uh, what else do uh, we yeah. have on the Wolverine? So again, um, all the other ambidextrous controls stay the same. So the rifle is still gonna be ambidextrous. All the same calibers are offered. So we have the 5.56, 300 Blackout, 308, and 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, we also have the 11 and a half inch Micron conversion kit for the 5.56 platform on this. Um, I mentioned accuracy. Mm -hmm. uh, because we reduced the gas and then we also changed our barrel mounting system a little bit, so, uh, we were able to improve the accuracy about 30% on this rifle over the MDRX. Wow, I mean, that's a significant percentage. Yeah, it's not a little bit, and, and we're pretty proud of that. So, uh, in our mind, this is the most accurate, reliable, and only bullpup semi-auto that does large and small frame calibers. That's fantastic, yeah. I mean, certainly, uh, we've we've definitely loved shooting the MDRX uh, previously on the channel. Uh, I think it's really cool. Uh, it's important to me as a left-hander to be able to swap that over because I've taken plenty of brass to the face before. It's not pleasant. I'd no. prefer to avoid it. Absolutely but uh, not. Uh, one other thing, and this is not going to come standard on the Wolverine, but the full auto version of this, which we're calling the Sabertooth, is going to come standard with an aluminum handguard. One of the complaints that we've got, and actually it may have come up in one of the videos that you had, is the uh, polymer forearm has a hard time holding zero. Yep. Um, so if I can, let me grab this. So the Sabertooth is going to come standard with this aluminum forearm, and it has a locking system kind of similar to how the MCX locks up, but the clamping force on these screws actually makes it so that this thing doesn't move one bit. And this will be available as an aftermarket accessory for the Wolverine, and it is compatible with the MDRX as well. That's great. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably going to be something that a lot of people would want to take advantage of. Like you said, uh, you know, even if you're not mounting an optic way out here or something, like still just uh, being able to have that nice secure mounting, you have plenty of space out here for different accessories, whether it be lights or lasers or what have you. Um, I really think it's cool that you have, you know, the nice reset uh, suppressor here on this full auto version. I um, mean, that gives it a really slick look. Yeah, and, and it was uh, built to do the recess, but it was uh, also widened on the side so that you could still use M-Lock attachments without... Yeah, your screws aren't going to keep poking into your suppressor. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it on the, the Wolverine and the Sabertooth. And then we do have one other new product. It's it's a, it's a full auto variation of the Quattro 15, which so, you guys are also familiar Yep, we with. had a Quattro 15 in the warehouse. That was a lot of fun to shoot. So, again, just a quick once once over again on the, on the design. So, this is our Quad Mag, our Q Mag 53. It's a quad stack magazine that is... Uh, quad all the way up to the top, so we redesigned the lower around the magazine to make sure that it would run flawless um, and reliably, and then we're introducing a full auto uh, variation of the Contra 15, which is the Infinity 16. The Infinity, uh, I love it. So. Any questions on this guy? No. So I mean, again, I've actually had some hands-on in time with the uh, the Quattro, and it was a it was a really fun time to shoot it. Uh, it's a if kind of if you go for like a magwell grip, you know, it's obviously a little bit wider. You 
it's a little bit different of a feeling, but what was really kind of fantastic was just when you have something like a, you know, just rapid fire and you guys are at the range, uh, maybe you have uh, certain triggers or things installed, uh, the ability to reload so less often, right? Like you're basically having the time of reloading and so it was fun. Like you can imagine if you're going through shooting a, a steel course or, or a three gun course or something, and just the ability to not have to reload and slow down. You save those seconds. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have a, a sponsored three gun shooter and I think he has the best analogy for this product as it relates to like what this does for the industry. It's like uh, 1911 used to be the standard, huh? right? And then 2011s came out and so everything now everything's double stacks. How many single stack pistols are there in the market nowadays? How much longer is there going to be a quote unquote single stack AR or is everybody going to start moving to a double stack AR so I, I thought that was a great analogy and, and we really do want to make this the new standard for AR-15 well, that's fantastic Nick I appreciate the time you've done here today the Wolverine the Sabretooth the Infinity they all seem like they're really cool products I'm happy to learn uh, get excited to learn more about them definitely have to get a Wolverine out to uh, the warehouse and that way we can do some filming with it uh, especially with you know those upgraded features love the uh, MBRX and just the Wolverine sounds like it's gonna be a blast it's, it's awesome we can't all wait right. to get you in thank, thank you man. so much now we're over here with my friend Ofer with uh, with a uh, trauma pack dude it's always good to see you see you Clayton. yeah appreciate that and by the way i my fiance has a trauma pack in her vehicle i've got a trauma pack in mine got a trauma pack on my kit got a trauma pack on my vest i stay prepared yeah. right and something i think that's that a lot of people kind of forget is how important first aid really is and you've got a couple of new products that one a few of in which i'm actually yeah. really excited about but let's go ahead and get started on this and then we i think we might have a little demo about how to appropriately apply a tourniquet or something like that Absolutely. i think we'd have some fun with that yeah but roll on into it man yeah so a few of our new features uh we want to talk about is first extraction we always talk about treating uh, but no one really has a way other than to just physically drag someone get yourself hurt and it's not effective so we came out with our micro litter we just launched it this week really small compact uh 450 pound rating um and about your average size so about six foot so this is new for us really excited um a really low price uh, uh point so that's great next for edc we We've been, this is one of the most requested items we've had is an ankle kit. So you can see how it looks. I'm wearing it now. It does print if you're wearing like fitted pants. Um, so it's not like for the skinny jeans. Yeah. But if you got a little bit more of like relaxed fit, uh, boot, boot cut, cut yeah. these will fit great. And what this is, it's actually a full ice pack in a very comfortable way to carry. I've been wearing this for now a couple months trying it out. Yeah. It's a sweat resistant neoprene. It's extremely comfortable. And it basically has everything that's in our normal eye pack. You can also scale it down. Down, maybe put an extra mag to make it less profile and maybe just do a tourniquet and an extra mag and then it's really low profile it will fit normal pants so that's new for us as well yeah. and now to kind of show you some little more innovation so we know that um, a fire suppression is a big problem for both civilians for first responders um, and there's two problems there one is you're getting burned uh, the smoke is allowing you to not breathe and that's a dangerous thing so whether you're in the off-road community or you're on the range and you have a small spot fire they all start small and it eventually gets big cold fire tactical we've been using for years now uh, it's uh, the main thing they use in like NASCAR they use it in big barrels to put you know the cars out so it does two things it extinguishes the fire and then it cools down whatever is burning whether it's the human or uh, the metal so for example 5,000 degree fire magnesium burning we literally can show you you spray that on and about five to ten seconds you can hold that piece of metal in your hand that's how it rapidly cools so this is the 20 ounce it will put out a little more than a full human like uh, on a Molotov cocktail so like civil unrest yeah. thing when you need to be prepared so what we've done was it was always in a normal pouch and it really just gave you that option so now we're gonna be adding and uh, this is brand new for this year a full pouch that mounts in two ways either by Molly or around a, a, like a pillar of a, of a off-road vehicle or something yeah. like that and um, it ha gives you the ability to extinguish a fire this yeah. comes with the 20 ounce or we'll have it in the 12 ounce so seat belt cutters and we use our shears to get someone out and then our full uh, version of our micro trauma pack so this treats about three to four critical injuries it's meant for one person uh, you would deploy the kid basically like that 
and then now it comes out even if this was fixed your tourniquet you would still have to get so that's a, a really new thing for us uh, it will come in the green black and um, red right Dude, so, uh, that's so new for us th that's awesome I've got the Arago fabrications molly panel stuff in the back of my forerunner and like I said I've got your your big trauma pack that you can that's you can simply rip and go which is awesome yeah but having this too because I've got a fire extinguisher that I literally just have bungee corded over there you know yeah. it makes noise it rattles it's not the most convenient thing in the world but at the same time I can quickly get to it right yep. this is a solution for pretty much all of that yeah. and again if you've got a Jeep Wrangler like also my fiance has this is something that can go right up on that right up on that pillar that you're talking about exactly. again that is really exciting stuff man yeah and then uh, one of the new things we kind of changed this year so you guys are familiar with our leg rig um, we had some feedback that it was riding a little too high okay. so what we did was as you can see here we removed about four inches of height from it okay. uh, so the new versions now that will be coming out uh, the black ones are all fully in, uh, now converted they'll sit much higher on you so um, you can see here I'll clip that in this gives you two options but basically clip that in you can't even see it with my badge and then it will sit much higher now where the, it's not you know not riding on the knee so right. and it still gives you the two AR two yeah. pistol and a, a full med kit if you need it so right. this has been almost popular for like uh, people that want to be prepared and yeah. first responders as well right for a right-handed shooter like myself having that clipped yeah. on the left side is yeah. awesome and then when you think about it people might be like dude that's a big bulky thing for everyday carry well that's not its intended purpose Absolutely this is a not. quick response type of thing I, I think about you know mass killings that might be taking place something like that you need to engage a threat then also deploy your first aid kit click on velcro on or uh, clip on and then you're in the fight yeah we recently had a shooting down in uh, orange county in uh, southern california yeah. one of the officers there uh had this exact kit and uh, that agency called me right after and said hey look our officer was the only one that was able to have both ammunition yeah. and ammo i'm sorry and medical yeah. and was the only one that had gear to treat because everybody runs to the to the threat right. no one is thinking of what's going to come after you eliminate the threat right. you have to go back find your medical kit so i think we we as the you know 2a community need to remember and I think a lot of people preach that if we're going to have the ability to defend ourselves and protect yeah. ourselves, it's not just, uh, you know, from the threat, but also of what's going to kill us. So, right. and I know you've been a big advocate of that. Um, yeah. I mean, I think we met you, we, you kind of already had our kid before I even met you. And then yeah. that's how we met. So I, I applaud you for spreading the good word. Well, I appreciate it. Well, something else that's really cool about you guys is your, um, uh, you've got your program where if you use any of your, your kid, uh, your, your first aid kit or anything like that in an actual, you know, event, you guys replace it. Yes, and uh, what we're going to... At no cost. Yeah, Yeah. so what we're going to try to do is um, we, we partner with a t-shirt company. We want to actually have a, uh, a custom-made shirt that... Because we get about uh, a couple times a month, people say, hey, I use the kit. So we want to have a shirt that we send out with the replacement for free. That's cool. So if you see someone wearing this kit, we'll have to show you how that looks soon. But um, So you really only earn it by helping someone. That's and then awesome. our thing is we want to empower people to, to be the difference. Yeah. And the way to do that is to use the gear. We're not worried about the, you know, making an extra buck and recharging you for a tourniquet or quick law we want people to use this gear right. and make a difference so right which, which is goal. which is awesome you got to be able to it's it's a, it's good to know how to make holes but it's really good to know how to plug holes you know Absolutely. <laughs> um, i want to show you two critical mistakes that people tend to make with tourniquet applications so one is you get this tourniquet it's in this case and you're like well, i'll just keep it protected we'll take it out of the wrapper because it's uh, you would think it'd be easy to take this out but under stress when you got water or blood on your hands and there's dirt see it's even taking me and we're in a controlled environment it's taken me a few seconds those seconds could could mean someone's life right so next I want you to envision that this is an arterial bleed as you can see here it's pumping the speed of this would be the speed of the, the blood coming out is the speed of the heart beating right we want to keep that blood inside so time is of the essence so one have a partner hold pressure in this groin if you have someone and you're doing this next there is a, th a theory that people will say and I'll show you how I deploy this is I kind of keep that red tip down but people always want to leave this in the sloop. Now imagine all this skin tissue and the pants are, are still here, they're not naked. It seems it'd be easy to just slide this on. However, this could get caught on some tissue, could get caught on the pants, and now you're taking way longer time to put this on and instead of just undoing it. So if it's on the arms, super easy to just do that. But I want you to remember if it's on the legs, just take that extra second that will actually save you minutes. Now I'm gonna lead with the windlass, I'm gonna put that under. And I'm now I'm gonna just scissor, kind of move it up like this to get it to where I want. 
Most of the time, if this is the distance, high and tight is fine, especially if you're still under threat and things like that. In a controlled setting, two to three inches is fine. I'm gonna position this and show you now the second biggest mistake, and that is people tend to put this on super loose. If I go loose like this thinking that this is fine, there's a little gap here, I'm wasting time turning this. Look, I haven't even got any tension and I've already done a full turn. So I want you to remember this. You have to pull this extremely tight where almost you're feeling like you're gonna break it when you pull it. And then get that Velcro all the way down, as you may see here. And now you'll see, so watch, it's still bleeding, right? The goal will be, I'm gonna turn it once. And there's twice, let's see if that worked. Look, and I just did it twice, and that completely worked. We're gonna then take this time strap, I'm gonna write the time, it's 9.32 right now. You have two hours before any nerve damage or anything like that. And you can see here that completely stopped. If I was to put it on loose, I would be turning this five times and it would still be oozing. So remember, high and tight if in the fight, yep. pull it as tight as you can and take it out of that silly wrapper. Right, right. I mean, how important this is, ladies and gentlemen, to be able to learn how to actually apply a tourniquet and all the other first aid that Trauma Pack teaches is, is it's, it's super important. Absolutely. Right? So this could potentially save a life, if not your own. So make sure you take note of this. I think, honestly, just a separate section would be a great video. And even a course, because you guys do courses as Absolutely. well, correct? Yeah. And we just opened our training uh, headquarters in, uh, in the Ranch Cucamonga in Southern California. So we're not just a funny name in the Ranch Cucamonga. But our, ultimately, our goal is, is, at the end of the day, whether you're a, a 2A advocate or just a prepared civilian, is we want you to be the difference. So take a course. Learn how to defend yourself. Learn how to save a life because it could be yours. Right, awesome. Oford, thank you so much, man. It's always such a pleasure. See you. And uh, don't forget to remove that tourniquet before he gets nerve damage, okay? Absolutely. <laughs> Guys, check out High Threat Innovations and Trauma Pack. You won't be upset that you did, especially if it is in an emergency situation and you need to save a life. All right, guys, I'm here at Global Orient, and I've got Jordan here with me. How's the show going, Jordan? Very, very tiring. All right, I, I, I definitely sympathize with that, man. I mean, I have been on my feet for days and, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good thing it's the last day's show. I, I agree, insoles help a lot. But you know what, we, we didn't want the show to end without getting over here because y'all have some really cool new products. So these are like brand, brand new. Brand, brand new, we're super excited. This is our first product that's actually Global Ordnance branded. It is the Monolith. So it is a bufferless AR-15, still DI, not piston, but the reason why it's called the Monolith is because of the barrel. So the extension, the gas block, and the brake is all milled out of one piece. So yeah, you know, a lot of times you hear the word monolithic and you're talking about the rail and the upper being the same piece. So similar concept, but this time it's the barrel, which is really interesting. Like, you know, normally the extension here is a separate piece, the gas block obviously sits on here. But in this case, you've just got one complete unit. Yeah, you know, it makes up, there's not, you know, really any tolerance stacking to happen and concentricities there. So it's got a chemo break. We partnered with Dead Air. We're super, they were excited about it. We're excited about it. Also, Foxtrot Mike is the one that's manufacturing everything for us. We just decided, we gave them a few specs we wanted to change, like in the lower. So ambi controls the whole way around. Yeah, we're, I believe with no scope or can, it's like five and a half pounds. Oh, wow. So you got a pretty lightweight package there too. Now, is it, uh, so again, like Fox Shark Mike, you know, some of their designs, so we've got, you know, it's still DI. Uh, we're not going to a piston, at least not yet. Not yet. Right? Uh, but we have kind of a, a capture recoil system above the bulk here, and that's why we can eliminate that buffer too. Correct, yeah. So yeah, I definitely think that's really cool. Like, you know, people really love the AR platform. Obviously, it's super popular, but because of the design and how it works, sometimes it does limit our options, right? Correct. We have that buffer tube out there. Now, with this, you can go fold stock, uh, you could, you know, all, you could do under fuller socks if you had some design. Yeah, like, uh, for sure. You know, I like the look. Yeah, um, and I like, you know, you've got a couple different options here. So, you know, we've got a brace, a side folding yep. brace. We got almost like an FN style uh, stock, and then uh, this one was kind of unique looking as well. Yeah, this is one of our stocks that we import. This one's made into the lower, mm -hmm. so there will be two options: one that comes on the 16 inch, and the 12.5 will come with a pick back plate, so you can slap whatever you'd like on there. So I guess that is one of those uh, kind of things, uh, since it is a monolithic barrel assembly, uh, you know, you lose a little bit of customizing with being able to change out different muzzle brakes and things. But I think that, you know, at least the option that you've described where it's got the integral dead air suppressor host kind of, uh, you know, at least that's going to preserve your ability to decide whether you want to go with a suppress or without a suppress. But uh, 
Yeah, you know, so this is uh, this is really cool. I, I think that, you know, especially as your first name yeah, on it product. This is the first little taste. Uh, I know there's plans. We'll have direct thread so you can, you know, make your choice on there. Uh, right now, 16 inch, 12.5. The other two big questions, when, how much? Sure. Don't wanna, I was, was going to beat you to don't, it. Don't want to push you because sometimes, you know. But. No, we're expecting some delivery. Everything to be out there just before March, at the beginning of March. The 16s right around like a 12, 30-ish MSRP and about 100 bucks cheaper for the 12.5. All right, that's great. Uh, so again, first foray into like having your, your name on the product. Uh, we do have some interesting products though that you're acting as the importer for, correct? Correct. All right, so what do we have? Well, now that we're two feet over this way, we got the two Listen, newest- Listen, don't give away our secrets, come on. <laughs> we have the two newest dry bobs. So the 10 millimeter has been out since around October, but it was popular, quickly sold out. We just got our second shipment of them. So if you see them anywhere, you better grab it now if you want one. But just a few weeks ago, the ATF approved for import the 45. So, so you said you were telling me this is the literal only one in the country. Literally the only one. But so when do we expect availability for that to be on the market? We are told we'll get our first shipment at the end of February. Okay, so not not a long wait then. No, hopefully not because it's the one that I really want. Don't don't tell the ten millimeter guys. So you know I think uh, that's great. The Strybog is a very popular uh, design. A lot of uh, love for it over at Classic Firearms, and so to be able to have these new uh, caliber options is really going to just be able to expand what it is you can do with the design, right? Because everyone loves nine millimeter, but I mean it's it's got its limitations. So going to some big boy calibers give you a, a little bit more flexibility with what you might uh, want to intend to do with them. Yeah, if the war hasn't gotten hot enough already. 2024 is going to be the year of the 10 millimeter guys going after the 45 guys. So we're excited to see what happens. You should comment below who you think is going to win. Hey, I love this guy. He's getting the engagement and everything. I'm not the marketing guy at all. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we could call it like the sumo caliber competition or something. The I big agree. boys, right? Yeah. All right. So Jordan, I mean, I really think that's great. You know, the, the rifle seems like a really cool, innovative feature. And uh, I mean, it's just exciting to have these extra options for Strybog, man. For sure. So now 22, 9 mil, 10 mil, 45. Yeah, I mean, I definitely appreciate the time you've taken to go over these. Obviously, you know, y'all guys are known for a lot of the things that you import, and it's uh, you know a fantastic addition to the market. And, and it's great to see that y'all are getting your name on something directly here in the states too. We're super excited, guys. We're over here now at Fold AR. We've got our friend Corby with us. It's always good to see you, man. You too. And Jason, I know you wanted to come check this out. I see your mind wandering yeah, already. The, the calculations are going. I, <laughs> I think I got it though. Okay. Um, you know, before we even get started, this, 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 let's see what let's see what you got. All right. Let's see. I think. Uh huh. He's, he's gonna get it. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Easy as that. Oh. He, he, dude, this is his first time he's ever even handled it, right? And, he, and Corby was like, should we, "Should we just should we show him how to run through it really quick?" I was like, "No, no. Let's get it on camera. Let's see if we can figure it out." Yeah. I just, I just rain man that. So. <laughs> yeah, that, is, that is. Awesome, man. Bring it back down. You just pull that cord out. Yep. Push the lever back in after you pull it out. Just push it in. Pull your BCG back. Bam. Yeah, that's it. Done. <laughs> that's it. Oh, man. Well, it's great to be here. We're winding down SHOT Show. Figure we'd end it with a couple friends of ours over here. So tell us about the model you got in your hand, man. So this is the Victor Marks model. Well, Victor Marks Signature Series. Yeah. So this is a 9-inch. This is built on one of our standard platforms. But it's got a Huxworks suppressor on it. Love the Huxworks. Yes. Uh, it's got a SB Tactical pistol brace on it, 30 round Lancer mag. And uh, in this model, we've got the AMG UH1 by Vortex. Yep. And this makes a 15 inch package. Right. 15 inches, now 32 inches. <laughs> Right. Now, you guys have done some, some nifty things with the rail, too, from what I can tell from, from the other models. I don't remember seeing, like, the QD and stuff like that. Or, or no, that's, that's, that's for the, the locking snap. mechanism. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's that's, that's me just not remembering. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yep. Dude. All right, so Victor Marks, you know, obviously, you guys, if you've watched the Sean Ryan show, things like that, or just seen the fastest disarm in the world, and he's a pastor, so he can kill you or save you, um, uh, really quick, he, did he have his hand in... You like like configuring this yeah a little bit you know, we picked out the colors together we picked out the hardware you know we recommended a couple items on here particularly the hooks works he was asking questions about which suppressor that we recommend and when we went to do the demo 
explained exactly. You know, flow through technology. Yeah. These guys are on top of the game yeah. and build the best flow through suppressor by far. Okay. And so he's he's on board with it. And what he demanded was a full capabilities weapon system that he can conceal in a backpack and carry in and out with him right to these so you know you know the environments that he's going in yes and uh, that's what we got here so again 15 inches yeah right that packs up nice and tight <laughs> does anybody contend with it yeah not that not that i've seen and you guys also have the model too do you still have the model that has the folding the, the tri-fold also or the dual fold i should say we're taking a break on the double fold this yeah. year okay we'll come back to that but what we're doing this year is with the Maxim Defense SCW. Yeah. So that overall package, yeah. and that's what he has, right. that's 12 inches long. Still with the same barrel as this one. Yeah. Now the downside of that is that if you put a suppressor on that firearm, yeah. then you would have to bring the stock out yeah, to match it. it. Yeah. So it's it's wasted real estate. Yeah, right, I understand that. But still overall, it's super cool design. And I like the simplicity of, the, of just single fold, you know, cause that's just a quicker action, you know, but even still the double fold as I learned it, learned it, Wow, learned. learned as uh, learned really quick. I mean, it's just like you guys kind of rip it and you yeah. do the same. And so it's not like it takes that much longer. It's just one more moving part, but it's not anything bad, no. right? You know. No. And so it's something that I thought was pretty freaking impressive. And so this is the Victor model. Yeah. And uh, this is one, obviously, like you said, it had Victor Marks had his hand involved a little bit. And yeah, he's walking into some dangerous areas, right? Yeah. And so being able to have the type of firepower might need it to where he's going instead of just your concealed carrier or whatever having something that you can get a little bit more rounds down range and it makes sense right we're still rolling with this concealed carrier too oh yeah exactly yeah. i'm saying in addition to that yep. you know yep. exactly right you got so, all your bases covered right so that's the victor let's talk about the scw over here yeah let me swap here I see Taper City over there. So Taper City? Yeah. Well, yeah. that's the key. That's the key. Yeah. So, as you mentioned, a self-releasing taper. Yeah. You know, I don't think we ever went over this. No, the actually, fine details of why this thing works. Yeah. So, 20 degree taper. Uh, the idea came from CNC machines. They have tool holders that have 20 degree tapers in them. And when you press the button, the tool comes out, right? But when it's latched in and it's spinning, you know, that tool is perfectly concentric and it's got to do all its work. So that's where the, that's where this portion of the idea came. Now the development of a way to actually fold this came from removing the barrel nut first. Yeah. If you get rid of the barrel nut, and that's what everybody said can't be done, it's not gonna be accurate, it's not gonna be repeatable yeah. if you remove the barrel nut. I said, nah, let's try it. Yeah. So came out with removing the barrel nut and putting the four screws in. You know, this is years ago, right? This is before fold AR. Four screws sandwich the barrel onto in between the forearm and the upper receiver. So now we don't have a barrel nut, but we still have to figure out how to make it fold and pivot. Yes. So that's where also the taper comes in that allows it to, to fold in on itself and then lock up. So with those tapers, the barrel is perfectly aligned with the upper receiver every single time. And and we've proven that over six years, you know, five thousand guns sold, and we don't really have we don't we don't have them at all. Right. Returning for failures of the of the of the folding barrel interface or accuracy or return to zero. So we're really proud of that. And uh, so as he was saying, twenty taper city. Yeah. Taper city. That's what allows this to function, yeah. is, is that taper. Right. If I'm wrong. Even, with it being so tapered and everything being so good, even if you didn't latch this down perfectly, it'd still be good. Right. If you don't latch it down, it will fire, yeah. and I say safely, loosely. Right. I say that in, in the loose sense. You well, can fire it, it's not going to blow up on you, yeah. but it's not going to be accurate. You're gonna be shooting over left. Well, y'all put out a video on that on, on Instagram. Yeah. yeah and beautiful. because because it's it's so funny because the latest one y'all did, you know, it's sitting there. You guys are just running it and it's like kind of shaking and yeah. stuff like that. You know, and everybody's like, oh my god, and like look look, look at this piece of crap. You know what I mean? Like what is this? And then you're like, no no no, y'all need to stay and watch the end of the video till the end of the video to understand that we're actually testing things here and we're showing you that you don't even have to latch this down and you you're still still shooting yeah. now obviously you don't want to do that but at the same time it's going to show you what kind of tolerances and what kind of quality you're yeah. working with because just because this isn't latched down doesn't mean you're gonna have a gun that's blowing up on you right, right. correct so, yeah and, and that was and that was the criteria when this started yeah. I built this on a 308 yeah that was the prototype 
It never went to market. I went immediately into AR-15s. But it was exactly that. It was, hey, if this thing is has a risk of blowing up, if somebody inadvertently does not latch it, this is a no-go. Yeah. This is a dead product. If it doesn't return to zero within some acceptable margin, if it doesn't do that, it's a dead product. Right. So we've we've moved past that, and, and I mean, you've seen them yes. time and time again. People try to try to show that it shifts or show yeah. that it's not accurate and you know it just it keeps uh, going it keeps going yeah, it keeps yeah. going and it, and it is so freaking neat i swear and again you're making you're getting the firepower and you're getting ultimately the type of uh, pretty much the power of your, your carbine in half the size mm -hmm. and able to deploy that really really quickly so again i see this being something you guys said you want to you're you're what you your vision is to see one of these in every school, yes. at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's uh, the most noble endeavor, yeah. is a school resource officer having to be in that facility around those kids all day, usually no action happening for years, right. and yet still be prepared at the moment's notice and be willing to take that bullet if right. they need to. Right. And they're, they're not well equipped. They're not well trained and they're not well equipped and they're not well paid. No. Those, that needs to be addressed too. Yeah. And all these things need to happen simultaneously. And now that we have the tool in place, now we need legislators and donors and police department chiefs looking at this seriously. Yeah. And I, I think it'll go a long ways. I mean, we, we approach police departments with this yeah. and they're just in all after they get it in their hands and connect it and take it to the range and see how this thing functions we win them over every time we knock out mp7s we knock out yeah. and i'll go down the list yeah. i don't need to do that yeah. but they fall in love with this product so quick oh, and, sure. and and it is it it lends to so much more capabilities right. that they've never even fathomed right mm -hmm. yeah which which again is excellent man so what do you think yeah, we, I, I need to get my hands on this. Yeah, you see a little 300 blackout truck gun for you? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys got it. Yep. You guys carry it. So, yeah, I'll you show go. you another feature. Oh, yeah, sure. So, you want to change calibers or barrels? There's your barrel caliber swap. I'll grab that barrel, put it on there. Do you, you see what it is? Push that pin, it's, and it's you're literally ready to go. The take down pin. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> so I can put a 16 inch on this. It would look weird. Yeah, right. With an SEW yeah. on it. Yeah. But you can put your you know, swap out 300 blackout, yeah. 556, five, uh, 12 and a half inch barrel. We have 12 and a half. And, uh, you know, 16 inch, 65 Grindel we have. Right. So buy one platform, in, in fact, yeah. an upper. Yeah. You know, you don't have to buy our full firearm. Right. If you get our upper, then come back to us for barrel systems yeah. and go between those different calibers. Oh. There you go. It's so super easy to clean right there. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's me. <laughs> that's it. That's the other thing. Yeah, ease of use and maintenance. Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. So how freaking cool is that? So I, yeah, Jason that's over here is like, okay, he's he's thinking up ideas. Sorry, you know. I'm nerding out. I'm, he's nerding out. All right, we can continue to nerd out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Corby, it's always such a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, man. You. Again, appreciate thank your mission so and everything and your vision, thank too, you, and what you're trying to do, too, and ultimately save lives. So, guys, check out Fold AR. God bless. Oh, man. That's only part one, guys. We still have two more parts, actually, because we're getting so much ground covered today. So hopefully you guys are, like, you know, appreciating all of that. Again, comment down below who you want to see covered. What do you guys think so far of the show? Are your feet still sore? All that type of fun stuff. We have feet. We. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're still down there, Doc. They, they're still down there. Kaya, you look alive. Yeah. Love, <laughs> love being here right now. <laughs> is, what time is it? Wait, what know. day is it? What year is it? I don't know. So. I haven't seen outside in three days. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're excited to be here. Stay tuned. God bless. We'll see you next time at Classic Firearms. Stay tuned again for part two and three.